Hey, we're going to look at reading graphs in this mini lesson. Um, we'll be reading bar graphs, line graphs, scatter plots, pie or circle graphs, um, depending on where you live is what you call it, whether it's a pie graph or a circle graph, but we'll be looking at those and talking about reading those graphs. First off, a bar graph, this is the, the I think the most basic type of graph um, where you usually have along the bottom certain categories, like in this case we're talking about favorite house pets, I just made this up obviously, um, and then a number along the left side. Now bar graphs can be turned on their side or they can be, you know, it's not always going to be on the left and on the bottom, but this is the most basic type of bar graph. And what bar graphs do and what they're good for is comparing. So we compare the number of people who like cats as their favorite house pet versus the number of people who like dogs. And you can say, well, how many more people like dogs than cats? How many more people like dogs than fish? Or how many fewer people like cows than, you know, dogs? And it's a comparative data. The types of questions are going to be comparative in nature. So you would look at it, five people like dogs, three people like fish, the difference is two. So two less people like fish than dogs or two more people like dogs than fish. And that's the types of questions and the type of reading of a bar graph. Again, very comparative in, in nature where you're looking at one thing here versus the next one there and you can kind of see them all visually right in front of you. That's a bar graph. Um, a line graph is usually used to show change over time. Um, here's an example. I just said January, February, March, April. I don't know what increases to April. Maybe the number of birds you see in your yard or something like that. Again, you probably have on the left um, an actual you know, number, one, two, three, four, five, whatever it is. And then um, a line graph will go up and down, usually over a measurement of time along the bottom. However, there are some times when it's not a measurement of time, it's just a flow, how much it changes. Um, again, it's usually over time when you have a line graph, but you'll get an occasional one that, that won't. But, so it's, it's basically a line graph is used to, to mark t trends or how much something is increasing or decreasing. Um, and then you'll be able to see it generally over, like I said, over a certain amount of time. So you can say how much did it increase from January to February. Um, that would be, you could do a bar graph as well to see how much it increased. Um, generally speaking with a line graph, you'll say, did it increase or decrease from January to March? And in this case, it's increasing. Um, there are some times where a line graph will be a little bit more spiky up and down. Um, so you'll say, oh, it decreased from this month to this month or from this time to this time. And that's how line graphs are usually, um, again, used to, to show progress or change. A scatter plot is when you plot out certain points, um, usually on a plane with just numbers left and right, but it could be, um, it's usually numbers left and right. It could be, you know, you have test grades on the bottom and the number, you know, or the student's work. Anyway, you could have different things like that, homework grade versus test grade or, you know, numbers against numbers and you sort of see a correlation between them. Now, what we do with scatter plots, again, you're looking for a correlation, is there are three basic types of correlations. The first correlation is a positive correlation. Um, I'm going to draw something in here that's called a uh, line of best fit. This is when uh, basically you draw a line in there and it's very approximate, but where it lands so that it's sort of showing the trend of the scatter plot. And this line of best fit is definitely moving up, so it would be a positive correlation. So that's a, an example of a positive correlation. The trend is going up. So if this is the number of hours spent inside of, or the number of, I don't know, minutes inside of a test or a test question, and this is the score that you got, um, it would sort of be, wow, the more time you spend, the better grade you get. Kind of an example. That's just, just a random example. Um, the other type, Again, I can put in there a, a line of best fit. Line of best fits are, are usually approximate, but there's, there's one about where it would be. So this one here you can see is definitely a negative trend. This one off point is usually, usually when you have a one off point like that, you can kind of ignore them um, unless, you know, there's a trend going to that. Again, 
we could say number of I don't know minutes spent on video games versus your test scores or something like that. I, I'm just throwing out random ideas. But this would be a negative correlation. In other words, the more time spent in that sort of decreases um, the, the desired result. And then there's also a no correlation. And if I were to draw a line of best fit across this, it would probably be a flat line. That's when there's no correlation. might be about there. No correlation means it doesn't really look like it has a positive um, or a negative correlation. It's just kind of a flat line. It can still go up and down. As you see here, some are down, some are up. It can still move up or down. It's just that there's, there's generally no distinctive thing. Like if it's more of this, then it's more of that. If it's less of this, less of that, whatever. You can't really make a correlation. There's no correlation that can be made. Scatter plots. So again, scatter plots are trends. You sort of you usually will draw a line of best fit in there to determine the trend or the correlation between two sets of data. Minutes spent on a test versus the grade, or minutes spent studying versus your grade on the test, or um, how your grade on your homework versus your grade on the test. Usually those will have a correlation and you can gather large groups of data and see trends um, and draw lines of best fit. And the final type of graph is a pie graph or a circle graph. Um, I made up these numbers again. I made up all the numbers. Um, cartoon, favorite cartoon animals. So a uh, poll of 6,000 people were not really made. And these were their responses. 58% liked monkeys, 23% uh, liked elephants, 10% liked goats, and 9% liked goldfish as cartoon animals. Pie graphs or circle graphs, um, they can be called both show us the part of a whole. Sometimes, usually, you'll see it in a percentage because the whole circle represents 100%. But sometimes, you will see it in just data numbers. Like they could have said, you know, 26 people liked monkeys, and then it would be less and less and less for the other numbers because monkeys is the largest portion. You can sometimes see numbers in there, but oftentimes, it is percentages because, again, a percent represents part of the whole. So that's the, the use of a circle graph. Not usually asking questions about um, comparison with this, um, but more, I guess I shouldn't say that. You, you can ask questions about comparison, but usually it's comparing the part to the whole. You can ask questions about goldfish and goat versus goats or goldfish versus elephants, but typically the use of a pie graph is to compare parts of a whole. Um, and percentages. So there you have it, the major types of graphs, bar graph, line graph, scatter plot, and a pie graph or a circle graph, their main uses, how to read them. And, and we've talked about a couple of sample problems with each of these types. I don't have any specific math examples, um, but that's the basics of reading each of those types of graphs.